careful what you eat there, buddy. You can eat too much of one thing. What? Uh, who are you? How do you know my name? Why might the body love foods so rich in carbohydrates and lipids such as these? Because biological molecules such as those provide us with energy, structural support, and more. Let's look into the wonderful world of macromolecules, shall we, buddy? I just want to finish my burger. That's the spirit, let's go! Uh, what the? Macromolecules are made of molecules strung together covalently. Polymers are a specific type of macromolecule. They only contain molecules bonded together of the same type and form a pattern. First, we'll talk about carbohydrates. The co basic composition of a carbohydrate <laughs> can be represented by this formula. In this formula, N represents the number of atoms for each element. Notice that in a carbohydrate, there are twice as many hydrogen atoms as there are carbon and oxygen atoms. In carbohydrates, there are monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides are classified with those of N values ranging from 3 to 7 and are also called simple sugars. The important sugar to remember is glucose. It provides our cells with energy through cellular respiration. If mono means one and di means two, what is a disaccharide, buddy? Two monosaccharides put together? Very good, buddy! You have earned yourself a glass of milk! But remember, buddy, there are disaccharides in milk called lactose. It is a combination of the lactose and glucose. Who would have thought you be taking carbohydrates when drinking milk? But disaccharides aren't where the fun stops. It continues on with polysaccharides, which is more and more molecules strung together to make one big macromolecule. Glycogen is a major polysaccharide. It provides animals with the much energy needed that they store. It is broken down into glucose where the animal's body most needs it. Now that you know about carbohydrates, let's transition over to lipids. Lipids are also organic compounds that are used for long-term energy storage and serve as building blocks. For fats and phospholipids are two things that we will focus on. An important thing to remember about lipids is that they're hydrophobic. The basic composition of a fat is one glycerol molecule with three fatty acids. Fats can either be unsaturated, meaning that they contain double bonds, or they can be saturated, which means they contain no double bonds. Those with more than one double bond are called polyunsaturated fats. Keep in mind that saturated fats are the bad fats. Lipids store energy and provide barriers to plants and animals. Though lipids are usually hydrophobic, there is one exception. They're phospholipid, or they contain a hydrophobic tail like other lipids. They also contain a hydrophilic head, meaning that they can interact with water. <gasps> Phospholipids form the cell membrane, with the hydrophilic head on the outside of the cell membrane. One last thing to cover with lipids is steroids. They're not just for bodybuilders. Steroids include cholesterol and hormones, which are very important. Look guys, I just want to eat my burger. I don't really care what's in it. Oh, but you should care, buddy. It's on the test. Test? What test? I have a test? What? <laughs> you should learn to listen better, buddy. But luckily, we have a lot of ground to cover. Proteins in particular. They are teeming all over in your food. But what are proteins? Proteins are pretty vital to growth, structure, and life itself. Indeed, life began simply as amino acids strung together to form proteins that eventually evolved. Proteins transport substances, speed reactions, make hormones, and provide structural support. Amino acids all have the same general structure. Proteins are made up of amino acids. They are made up of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, and sometimes even sulfur. When an amino group of one 
amino acid combines with the carboxyl group of another amino acid, the linkage forms proteins. This link is called a peptide link. These link with others to form a polypeptide. There are four primary structures for proteins. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. The primary structure refers to the sequence of amino acids combined in a protein's polypeptide chain. They can form three dimensional shapes around the polypeptide backbone, or the main chain of linkage. And that back on. They can form three dimensional shapes around the polypeptide backbone. I or the main chain of linkage. This is the secondary structure, the interaction and rotation. The helix and the pleat are two main types of secondary structures. The structures they form are referred to as the tertiary structures. When polypeptides interact with each other, that is called the quaternary structure. Oddly enough, each polypeptide is considered a subunit of the overall protein structure. I think we need another checkpoint. So you think you're ready for the test, buddy? So, let's see. Macromolecules are smaller organic molecules bonded together. Four main groups are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Each play a vital role for animals and plants. And subunits of each can combine to form larger units of each biological macromolecule. Amazing! Your listening skills are superb! Oh, I see you have found yourself some lipids. But what are you going to do with all that knowledge about them? Uh-huh, buddy? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go eat my burger. You stole my energy and build my brain. Bon, 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 bon. You stole my genes and my DNA. Bon, bon, bon. You quick as a bon, bon. I mean, I like it. Bon, bon. Goodness gracious, great macromolecules. Wow.